Hello, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Galaxy Report. The Galaxy Report is here to bring you breaking news stories, as featured first on thedailygalaxy.com. I'm your host, Nicole Butcher, and this week we're going to be diving into the world of dark matter. Although dark matter is considered to be the backbone to the structure of the universe, scientists still know very little about its nature, as the particles have so far evaded detection. Dark matter was likely the starting ingredient for brewing up the very first galaxies in the universe. Shortly after the Big Bang, particles of dark matter would have clumped together in gravitational halos, pulling surrounding gas into their core, which over time cooled and condensed into the first galaxies. The first galaxies in the early universe may illuminate what type of dark matter we have today says Mark Vogelsberger, Associate Professor of Physics at MIT's Cavalli Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research. Scientists have been theorizing whether dark matter is cold or warm, but recently, a new type of potential for dark matter has appeared, and that is fuzzy dark matter. Scientists in 2019 at MIT, Princeton, and Cambridge simulated for the first time what early galaxies would look like if formed from fuzzy dark matter. In most widely accepted scenarios, dark matter is cold, made up of slow moving particles that, aside from gravitational effects, have no interaction with ordinary matter. Warm dark matter is thought to be a slightly lighter and faster version of cold dark matter, but still similar. Fuzzy dark matter, on the other hand, is something entirely different, consisting of ultralight particles about one octillionth the mass of an electron. In their simulations, the researchers found out that if dark matter is cold, galaxies in the early universe would have formed in nearly spherical halos. But if the nature of dark matter is fuzzy or warm, the early universe would have looked very different, with galaxies forming first in extended tail-like filaments. In a fuzzy universe, these filaments would have appeared striated, like starlit strings on a harp. Dark matter accounts for 85% of the matter in the universe. As new telescopes such as the JWST come online with the ability to see further back into the early universe, scientists may be able to deduce whether the nature of dark matter is fuzzy, cold, or warm. The nature of dark matter is still a mystery, co-author Anastasia Filikov says. Fuzzy dark matter is motivated by fundamental physics, for instance, string theory, and thus is an interesting dark matter candidate. Cosmic structures hold a key to validating or ruling out such dark matter models. Computer simulations show us that some dark matter models, like warm dark matter or fuzzy dark matter, predict that the first galaxies that formed in our universe may be filament-like. Philip Mox told the Daily Galaxy. Other models, such as cold dark matter, he explained, predict that the galaxies look more like round blobs. Thus far, we have not been able to detect these first low-mass faint galaxies. But if we do, that would narrow down what dark matter could be made of. Special thanks to Maxwell Moe, astrophysicist and NASA Einstein Fellow, for breaking the story first on thedailygalaxy.com. And now, for a story on the gravitational ways that have been used to detect the dark matter of our universe. It is with the help of extremely sensitive detectors at gravitational wave observatories that scientists may now finally be able to discover what is the elusive exotic material that is dark matter. Gravitational waves will bring us exquisitely accurate maps of black holes, maps of space and time. 
These maps will make it crystal clear whether or not we're dealing with black holes as described by general relativity. Says Nobel Prize Lockeret, Caltech's Kip Thorne. Now scientists at Cardiff University's Gravitational Exploration Institute are using the technologies behind one of the biggest scientific breakthroughs of the century. A recent theory says that dark matter is actually something called a scalar field, which would behave as invisible waves permeating all galaxies, including our own Milky Way. According to the scalar field hypothesis, ultralight dark matter behaves more like waves than particles, and it interacts extremely weakly, possibly not at all with normal matter, except through gravity. We realize our instruments could be used to hunt for this new kind of dark matter, although they were initially designed for detecting gravitational waves, says Professor Harmut Grote from Cardiff's University Extra Gravity Exploration Institute, who leads this investigation. We have ruled out scalar field dark matter in some mass ranges and for a coupling constant that is six orders of magnitude smaller than has been ruled out by previous experiments, Grote told the Daily Galaxy. To explain, we searched for a particular type of dark matter named scalar field dark matter, which has now been constrained a bit more than by previous searches. It is a big piece of the puzzle of dark matter. Within the tool used for detection, otherwise known as the laser interferometer, there are two beams. These two beams of light are bounced between mirrors before meeting upon a detector. From this, scientists can gauge with great accuracy how out of sync the beams of light are within each other, which in itself becomes a proxy for any disturbance the beams encounter. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, otherwise known as LIGO, consisted of two interferometers are located in the U.S. Even though dark matter has never been directly detected, scientists suspect it exists due to its gravitational effect on objects across the universe. For example, a large amount of unseen matter may explain why galaxies rotate the way that they do, and how they could have formed in the first place, as discussed earlier in today's report. We believe these new techniques have the true potential to discover dark matter at some point in the future, says Sander Vermoulian, researcher of scalar field dark matter. He notes, new yet to be built experiments for detecting dark matter therefore need to be designed to be sensitive to dark matter with a different mass or weaker coupling strength if they are to have any hope of making a detection. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Galaxy Report. The Galaxy Report would not be possible without the researchers and scientists at thedailygalaxy.com. I'm your host, Nicole Butcher, and make sure to subscribe to stay in touch with all new episodes. See you guys next week!